Now let's understand what are the different different types of testing that we do uh, for any product, any software or any application that we create. Okay, by the way, so there are n number of uh, type of testings which are available uh, for different different scenarios, for different different situations. Uh, we cannot sum them all up in here because we are not learning how to be a QA. Uh, we are trying to learn Apex testing and it's just a basic that I'm uh, introducing to you guys who are not aware about uh, uh, the, the testing thing, right? Or And what exactly is testing and why do we actually do that? So it's just a basic introduction. So we'll be uh, talking about re like relatively lower number of uh, testings available out there in the market, right? Relatively lower number of or less type of uh, testings Av available out there, right? So initially, when you uh, see testing at a broader perspective, uh, there are they are divided into uh, normally two aspects, right? Uh, you can divide it even further, uh, but normally it, it, it is divided into two aspects. Number one, functional testing, right? What I mean by functional testing is that whether this software, this application, or this product is working according to the requirements or not, like. When I press this button, is it uh, like doing the job that it is supposed to do? When I press that button, it, is, it, is it doing the uh, job that, I, that it is supposed to do? Uh, when this, when a record gets saved into the database, uh, like are we able to see it in this particular way or not? So everything functional uh, is comes under functional testing. Uh, like what that particular thing needs to do uh, is happening in the appropriate manner as we expect it to happen. Or not, so it's a, it's a binary thing, logical thing, right? Uh, in in with logical thing which we actually test inside uh, this the functional testing, right? And when when we talk about non-functional testing, it's very simple. Non-functional testing is a type of testing uh, in which you test other aspects of that particular application, that particular software, and stuff like that. And that might include uh, the UI testing, like with how the UI looks, what is exactly the user experience and stuff related to that and there are some more stuff that also uh, th that is also counted into non-functional testing which is not related to the functional requirements of that particular product or that particular software or application. Uh, now let's go further into the functional testing. Uh, and yeah, I mean this is this, uh, so uh, while going further into the functional testing, uh, it further gets divided into two aspects. One is, or two parts or two types. Uh, one is manual and another one is automated. Let me tell you what exactly that means. So there is an th so if you test this particular remote uh, manually, right? Uh, you can check whether the uh, uh, whether this remote is working fine or not as it is expected to do, or it, is it doing the job as it is expected from this to do the job. Uh, according to the requirements of this particular job, right? So whether the AC is getting turned on, turned off, temperature, different, different modes. So this is something which is called as a manual testing in which human labor is involved, right? There's a human interaction which is happening with that particular system, with that particular application or with that particular product, with the help of which by applying different, different test cases. And when I say test cases, that means different, different combinations uh, or different different requirements that we need to test for a single product or for a single functionality inside a single product. So this is what it is test case. So we have to uh, have human interaction with that product or with that system or with that application in order to test whether it is working fine uh, or whether it is working as expected or not. So that's manual testing. But imagine like how many remotes does this factory generate or does a factory generate in a day? Like probably thousands, right? So how many people are required to test thousands of remotes every day? Like, I mean, depends on the time, how, uh, how much it takes, and depends on the number of test cases on which we have to test this, uh, that how many people, people will be required. But again, even if we supply the need of the human labor, which is required to test this particular remote for thousands of uh, remotes in a day, there will be still a chance of error uh, which is again a human error, right? Uh, the human testers uh, uh, which will be testing it manually might leave some test cases behind or might not test it as well uh, as it is required to be tested. So that again gives us a problem that uh, there can be human errors which can be left even if we do the manual testing uh, with a lot of human labor 
for the particular uh, product or for the particular system similarly when you talk about software or applications uh, how the software or application is working is something and that can be tested uh, by being uh, a manual tester by just uh, like doing the stuff which the end user will be doing at the end of uh, at the end of the delivery of that particular application or that particular software but there might be some test cases that the manual tester forgets to test right and again uh, there's one more problem that comes up with manual testing and that is you need to do it again and again and again and again and it, it takes a lot of time to test things manually or to test an application or a software or a product manually it takes a lot of lot of lot of time uh, why because once there is a problem you send it back there is some update that happens to it and then it comes back to you uh, like to, to test it again and then you have to do that testing again and while doing the manual testing you like earlier there was a test case which was working perfectly and now that that is not working perfectly so there was test case a test case b so test case a was working perfectly onto this application but test case b was not working perfectly so you sent it back to the developer that this is an issue the developer changed some code and now the test case b is working perfectly but the test case a has got a problem so you need to make sure that all the test cases are uh, like being evaluated again and again whenever uh, the application passes through the testing phase so this becomes a huge 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 problem and as a solution uh, to this, we have got automated testing, which basically means that in order to test an application or a software, all what we do is we write some scripts, we write some code, which will simulate uh, the inputs and the output, uh, the input, uh, which are the inputs which will be provided by the end user or by the manual tester. And it will uh, verify or match the expected outputs uh, with the output that the system is giving and if the outputs are right then the test case will be passed and if the output will not match to the expected requirements then uh, the test case will not get passed and hence the application will not go further into the development life cycle so automated testing is a big thing and it is a very very important uh, aspect when it comes to software deliveries and app when it comes to uh, making applications as well and let me tell you why, uh, because there are a lot of applications that are being uh, created on a daily basis and uh, how many ma manual testers can be there and uh, like, okay, so automated testing basically automates this testing part. So all what you need to do is you just need to write down a script or write down the test cases once and whenever you want to execute all the test cases, all what you need to do is just hit a button, it will execute those test cases onto that particular code and it will verify whether the, all the test cases are getting passed or not or, or if there are some test cases which are not uh, getting passed in the test run and you can flag those things to the developer back again so that the uh, that there can be some changes that can be made into, into the code. So when we talk about automated testing, Apex testing is something very similar and in fact Apex testing is nothing but automation testing or automated testing of the Apex code that you are writing down inside the Apex classes or inside the Apex triggers, right? So Apex testing is basically testing of the code that you have written down inside the Apex classes or the Apex triggers and all what you're doing is, uh, okay, and by the way, uh, when it comes to Salesforce or let's say Apex, it provides you a testing framework of its own with the help of which you can write down the test cases, you can execute those test cases and you can see the results of those test cases in a particular window to verify whether the test cases are getting passed or not onto that particular code. So what I'm trying to say over here is like, let's say there's a class that you've created, A class, and in order to test the code which is written inside this A class, what you're doing is you're creating a test class which says test A uh, or whatever name that you want to give to it and this will send different different inputs to this particular code which is written inside the test class A uh, which, which is written inside the class A and it will get some outputs based on the inputs that it has given and it will verify that the output is matching uh, the expected result or not and if it is matching the expected result it will like mark the test case as passed and otherwise uh, it will mark the test case as failed. So with the help of this, you'll be able to test different, different code that you have written down inside your Salesforce org in Apex. So, and by the way, you need to test all of the, you need to make sure that you test uh, 
all of the code that is written, uh, that is written inside the org or in the, inside the Salesforce org with the help of Apex testing. And uh, why it is important, let me tell you when it comes to Apex or Salesforce. Because a wrong code can do a lot of different stuff uh, to a, like to, to, to the organization uh, which it cannot expect, uh, which, which can actually turn into bigger losses for that particular organization. So like let's say there's a company called as Apollo Tires and this Apollo Tires has got an organization, uh, basically a Salesforce org in which they've got a lot of data related to, the, related to their products, related to their dealers, related to their sales executives, related, related to their deals, related to their everything, right? And there is some Apex class that the developer wrote down and it got deployed into the production. Let's say, let's just say it got, uh, like if you deploy that Apex class inside uh, the production org, it can corrupt the data which is already present. It can delete the data which is already present. It can uh, like corrupt, yeah, I mean, not corrupt, but uh, it, it can actually uh, create a lot of losses for the organization if not working well. So what we want is that this Apex class which is written uh, inside this org should be very well tested so there are no repercussions of deploying this Apex class into the production org or into the Salesforce org so that uh, no live data or no live application gets hampered because of an untested code or an untested program. And that is why we need to uh, write down test cases or we need to do Apex testing for all of the Apex code that we are writing down in Salesforce.